love to see the work that you are doing in this class. And so the best way to do that, obviously, is to send me a digital file. And I just wanted to very quickly go over some good ways to take pictures of your artwork. Um, it's good outside, natural light works out well. And if you can lay your artwork flat, then you would go into your regular camera mode. And this is the important thing that I think a lot of people forget. You want to hold your camera, your device, flat or parallel with your artwork. Nothing like this, nothing like this. And I'll show you some stills of that in just a minute. But that's the main thing. And when you are, are kind of uh, cropping your work out of camera, you want to make sure you've got a little bit of buffer around the outside. Okay, so you have taken photographs of your work and you pull it up on your uh, device. In this case, I've got an iPad and it should look something like this. The screen comes up with a menu bar on the top, maybe, uh, you know, little thumbnails of past shots you've just done. Now, this is a little confusing because it's a picture of my iPad with this one, but I'll bring it up a little bit closer so you can see that red arrow is pointing to the word edit. In your phone or device, the word edit should be around. It may not be exactly in that corner, but that's what you're looking for. Go ahead and tap that. Once you've hit that edit function, then you will have these icons show up around your photo. Again, it may be, I know with an iPhone, some of them are on the bottom and some of them, these are on the top, these are on the bottom. This is an iPad. It's not necessarily the location, but the um, icon you're looking for. So this is the icon you want to start with. It's two right angles kind of doing this, and they have arrows on each side. That is the crop function. When you tap on that crop function, this white frame shows up around it. And what you want to do is put your finger on the corner. There's a little arrow there and a little heavier part and press. And then a grid will show up and you can push your finger toward the corner of your painting. Same thing down here, and it will move the two adjacent lines to frame your piece. If that gets a little confusing, you can also just tap in the middle and move one line at a time, okay? So you can see my finger over that corner I just mentioned back with the, the red arrows moving. So you slide your finger like this and those two lines will come together and close up together where your index finger is. And I've already done that on this corner. So now I wanted to show you a couple of do not do these. Remember in the, earlier in the video when I was tilting my camera this way and this way with my artwork staying flat? Well, this is what happens if you do that and try and edit. So this is the edge of the camera, these green lines, but because I had my camera tilted this way when I took the photo, the image of the artwork, it's a little exaggerated, but these yellow lines show it comes in and you can't crop it properly that way. Also, the same exact thing happens if you're tilting your camera the other way. Again, you've got somewhat of the straight lines, but then you can see this angle here coming out where you won't be able to get a good crop. You'll, if you uh, try to do it, you'll have to leave out a lot of the image on the wider angle, and you probably don't wanna do that. So this is one that I wound up using, and the lines are basically parallel, the line of the um, digital, iPad or whatever you're using, phone, um, is aligned with the edge of the image of the painting that you've taken. So you want that parallel kind of line to make it easier to crop. And also I'm showing you this so you can kind of look for that lining up as you're taking the picture. So this is what it will look like after you framed it up. It's okay if you have just a little bit of extra showing over to the side. This isn't going to be for a, um, a show or an exhibition, but basically you want to fill this up with the image that you painted.
If you would like, here's a second thing you can do. So we finished with the framing tool over there. Now, if you'd like to get a, a, a truer, well, I don't know if it's a truer, but it's a way to pop up your color. You can hit this magic wand if you have a, um, a Mac product or an Apple product, and it may jump up the uh, color just a bit. If it's way too much, you might want to actually hold the original artwork next to your photo and see if they're within the same ballpark. I'm not looking for real precise color examination, but, you know, I want to make sure I'm getting something that looks like your picture. Okay, now comes the part where you email it. So I've got it cropped. I've got the color the way I want it, and I'm back in this you know, there's edit, we don't want edit anymore, but then there's another icon again, it may not be in the same place, but it's a, like a rectangle with an arrow going through it. That means you, this is your send off button. You hit this, and then this screen comes up. It, again, this is Apple specific, but uh, you have several different ways to share your, um, artwork or your image, your digital image, and what I'd like you to do is hit the uh, mail icon, all right? So after that, this whole thing will come up and, it, you know, create a new message. You're sending it as an email, and two would be my address, and then uh, if you want to put something in the subject matter, a good thing to do would be your last name and then the watercolor exercise, um, but, you know, not necessarily essential, so... So that is basically how you take a photo, edit it, and then send it off as an email. And I would really love to see what you're working on in this class. And I may ask you, uh, if you don't want me to post it on Facebook, I definitely will not, and I will not put names to artwork anyway. But anyway, thank you for listening, and I hope this comes in handy.